You want to improve at PvP, but you have absolutely no idea where to start? Well, today I'm going to be giving all of my best tips, starting from lesser known things, all the way up to things I only learned after 13,000 hours. But before we get into this, guys, could you please subscribe? This video took a lot more time and effort than most, and subscribing really helps out, and I appreciate it so much. The first and most important thing, in my opinion, is your settings. If your settings are off, nothing else matters. So whether you're on keyboard and mouse or controller, make sure you're on a good sense sensitivity for you and don't just copy what other players use guys the best way to find a sensitivity is to start low and raise it up as you go until you find your perfect sensitivity the reason starting slow and raising is better than going high and lowering is because when you start slow you'll be under adjusting for every shot you make opposed to if you start really high you're likely over adjusting for every shot you make and you have to find the perfect median where you're not over adjusting and you're not under adjusting your aim and you're consistently hitting those shots now if you're on controller like i am there's a few very important things your ads sensitivity modifier your sprint to turn scale are massive massive things you need to adjust as well as if you're on controller there's some binds that you can just change that'll make life easier for you for example on controller it's not as easy to be double pressing a button to use icarus dash or or even a dodge so i like to set those just to a single press of a button to waste no time at all where someone could have just pressed it once for all you know that could win or lose an engagement for you now the combo here that i'm going to explain is the look sensitivity and the ads sensitivity modifier you want a decently high sensitivity so you're not turning around and getting smacked before you can do anything but also you don't want it too high so you can control i like to sit around 12 and you might be thinking well now i can't control my ads aim and i'm missing all of my shots because my sensitivity is high that is where ads sensitivity modifier comes in you simply lower this and it's going to lower your sensitivity while ads or aiming down sight with 12 sensitivity i feel really fast with my shotgun and really good adjusting my aim but then when I aim down sight, my sensitivity lowers so I can hit easier shots with my primary and sniper. Sprint to turn scale is one of those things you really gotta find your sweet spot for. If you feel like you're turning corners too slow while sprinting, or you can't adjust enough to get into these quick engagements and get out fast enough, then you may need to tweak this up or down. I see some people play with this very low, and I have a hard time understanding how they turn around while mid sprint and still are able to win a fight. Just make things easier on you and find the perfect sprint to turn scale. Obviously, you're gonna wanna play with vibration off. If you've always played with vibration, gonna take a little bit to getting used to but your controller vibrating probably doesn't help your aim another thing is your reticle color i don't think as many people realize how big of a factor this can play in my opinion yellow is the best because no matter what i'm looking at my reticle stands out and i'm never losing track of my target with a white reticle you could lose track of your target on white object with a blue reticle sometimes the sky or stuff like that and i feel like yellow is the best to really always know exactly where you're aiming especially when you need it another thing that could help you a ton is the full auto firing option if you find yourself using pulse rifles a lot or weapons where you constantly have to tap the trigger like scout rifles and pulse rifles you're gonna want to turn this on and even some people i've heard get used to it with hand cannons and use it to hold down fire with them moving on to the next thing after your settings that i would value the most is your build i'm not just talking about your exotic and what weapons you want to use i'm talking about your stats not enough people realize how important these are and what you should use for each class there's a very easy way of looking at the six stats the top three all relate to a specific class but can be good for any and the bottom three are all around ability regeneration obviously mobility is good on any class but you need it on hunter for your dodge and then resilience is necessary on every class but you need it on titan for your barricade and then recovery is once again needed on every class but you need it for your rift usually the best thing in my opinion you can do is at least get six resilience try to get as high as you can in your character's class stat i went with recov and then on most characters i go for discipline as well especially on my warlock because fire bolts and healing grenades are just too good after you've at least got those stats or at least brought in your stats up a little bit if you guys want an in-depth video about armor i can also make one to explain how you can get better armor and easily have triple and quad 100s when necessary but the next main thing is maybe you're not bad maybe the weapons you're using are just bad currently in destiny there's a huge smg pulse rifle meta so if you're outside of those guidelines you might not be doing as well as you could be popular smgs like the immortal and pulse rifles like no time to 
explain are just dominating the crucible everywhere. It is definitely worth it to try out a bunch of different weapons and see what fits you best. My ideal loadout is Rose Hand Cannon or Ostringer Hand Cannon and then a Sniper because it fits the way I like to play. Because at the end of the day, you're going to be the best at playing the way you like to play. Using meta weapons can seriously help, but also playing in a way that comforts you is huge. On top of that, you may be used to playing solo. Playing with like-minded individuals can help you grow extremely because when you're playing solo, there's just some things out of your control. And that's where when people ask me what playlist do I think is the best to get better in, I firmly believe it's Rumble because before you can worry about how good you do in trials or how good you can do in comp, you need to worry about being able to win your 1v1s and consistently come out on top from 1v1 and 1v2 engagement. And the weapons you use also kind of brings up a point which is identifying god rolls. It seems a lot of people in Destiny 2 have a hard time identifying god rolls and have to ask their friends or other players what is good and what's not. And you don't want to be that person because you want to be able to tell stuff on your own and you don't want to be annoying. There's multiple ways you can do this. You could simply, every time you get a weapon, read the perk and understand if that is good for you. But before you go and learn every perk, it's very important to learn every stat for every weapon. Obviously, range increases the effective range. That's an easy one. Stability is how much or little recoil you experience while firing. That also plays a part in how much you flinch when you're being shot. Handling is the speed at which the weapon can be readied and aimed, as in your ADS speed. As you guys know, since Snapshot was nerfed a while back, having a very high handling sniper can almost feel better than having Snapshot. And then obviously, reload speed is a no-brainer. Aim assistant is how much aim assist your weapon has, and this can easily be affected by targeting mod. As you can see, my beloved has a 73 aim assist, but by being an absolute jerry and throwing three solar targetings on my helmet, as you can see here, from light.gg, which is also another great resource you can search anything on here such as weapons perk armor mods and it will tell you exactly the nitty gritty details about these items as you can see here targeting mods grant five aim assist with one on eight with two on and ten with three on also makes the accurate cone size better and the ads animation duration multiplier better which means my 73 is actually 83 and then you add a targeting adjuster which as you can see here light.gg once again adds plus five aim assist so we brought up to 83 from our helmet mods plus 5 from targeting adjuster now we're at 88 but wait there's more we have moving target on our sniper which increases target acquisition which grants 10 aim assist with the enhanced version as we learned from light.gg meaning i have a 98 aim assist on a sniper and as a controller player this is basically a wet dream if i press left trigger on my controller jesus pretty much takes the wheel and clicks on everyone's head and makes the game literally easy mode now, a lot of that might have been confusing to you, but you can see how easy it is to make something that may appear in game not as great, very good with mods that don't show you exactly what they do. Which is why, like I said, light.gg is such a handy, handy tool for learning things like this about the game. They even have a god roll hub, which can help you find the most popular weapons in PvE and PvP and the best rolls for them, but I don't really use this. Now that we've covered your stat build, armor mods that can make your weapons feel great, what god rolls are and how to find them all of your settings it's time to actually get into the in-game stuff to improve your skills as a player for my demonstration i'm going to be in a private match but for you guys i need you guys to take everything you learn in this video and go into rumble it's gonna suck you're gonna play poorly you're not gonna improve for a little bit but you're going to learn and you're slowly going to get better whether you're on controller or keyboard and mouse i know your reticle is slightly different depending on what weapon you're using all of these same tactics apply and will help you improve as a player I have actually done a lot of Destiny 2 PvP coaching and helping players a ton in the past and all this has proved to help players increase tenfold. The immediate thing that I always tell people and notice immediately when playing and watching them play is their crosshair placement. A lot of people are looking low at the ground while running around thinking they can see more because their arms aren't in the way or they're looking too high up and this is just wrong all over. Your crosshair is the most important part of your gameplay because once you ADS that is where you are shooting. What I always try to tell players is remember the height of a guardian your height when you see a guardian you always want to have you should know the height of enemy guardians because they're all the same and you want to leave your crosshair about chest level for example i wouldn't be running around this corner looking down at the ground or looking too high up because if there's someone at the end of this hallway they're going to shit on me instead of running in there like that i run in here with the knowledge of where their head level is and if they are standing in this doorway i can aim and easily hopefully get the first shot on the enemy opposed to if i'm looking a little bit down i have to all the way adjust up which could cause you to over or under adjust depending 
depending on how new you are to the game. The same thing applies to your sniper. You're not going to slide in and quickscope at knee level because you're not going to get a sniper kill that way. You want to slide in and be aiming where you know the head is going to be or upper chest for a smaller adjustment or no adjustment at all. And you can learn this for multiple, multiple angles on every map. That's just going to come down to how much you play. Like this angle, that angle, this angle. And just knowing where their heads are going to be, or like I said, upper chest from any angle you peek. The next most important thing, besides obviously crosshair, is going to be your abilities. Learning when and when not to use your abilities, especially depending on what class you are. A lot of people that I see play Warlock make the mistake is as soon as they take damage, they think they immediately have to pop their rift just because an enemy's far away and they're doing a lot of damage to them. This can be a good tactic to get your shots in, but oftentimes you're wasting your rift by popping it immediately. If someone Someone's not going to push up right away or there's not two enemies popping your rift when you could just go to cover for a few seconds is a major waste. I will now not have my rift as you can see in the bottom left for probably the next two fights because I chose to use it in a 1v1. For your melee ability and grenade it really depends on what class and subclass you're running but I see a lot of times players don't know when to throw their grenade and because of that they end up wasting it. It is important to realize you should always use a grenade to either finish someone off or pull them out of a corner. You should shouldn't just play like you're playing Apex Legends Arena and throw grenades in the air or throw them at places you think they might be at because you're wasting your abilities that could change a gunfight. For example, if I'm fighting a player at this angle, I slide the corner. I know he's weak. If I push in with my primary, I'm going to be risking getting shotgunned or fusion rifled or anything close range because I do not have a setup for that. Instead, I could throw my melee or throw my grenade and likely hit the enemy in the corner and force them to either move or die. One thing I tell a lot of people who predominantly play solar is if you feel like your grenades aren't getting the biggest bang for your buck, just switch to a healing grenade because the cool thing about a healing grenade is even if you miss where you throw it, you can always run up to it and grab your little healing ball wherever it's at or throw it to a teammate or simply just throw it straight down at your feet for instant cure and instant restoration. The next thing people don't take enough advantage of is cover and all of the different kinds of cover. Especially on this map, this is the perfect example of what to do and what not to do with cover in Destiny 2. I've seen so many people come up top and try to peek this open angle or corner peek this door when there is such a better angle so close and they're not even looking at it. Instead of doing this and freeing open your entire body or the the entire left side of your body to the opponent down there simply peek the window give yourself the best advantage of cover and you can even abuse the cover like this if you're really sweating opposed to giving up entire body and this works with things like these stairs as well you could stand right here and angle these people you're giving up your whole upper body opposed to crouching at the bottom of the stairs stepping up to the top step backing down stepping up to the top step backing down and giving yourself the best possible advantage in these fight another place i always see is people peeking the right side of crates here when there's just a better angle of jumping up and taking your shots like this. There's examples of this all over Destiny 2 where you could peek a very good angle that's very good for yourself, but you take a much more risky angle for the ego challenge and it's just not worth it overall for improving as a player. The next thing I hear a lot is what subclass should I play? A lot of people just copy their favorite streamer, which might be good for you since which might be good for you, but it might also be not. It's important to realize the differences of supers regen time, regardless of what your intellect is, even even if you have a hundred intellect, Dawnblade is still going to be one of the slower tier supers. And that is why Well of Radiance and Bubble Titan are insanely popular because of the super insane uptime, 6 minutes 57 seconds compared to a whopping 9 minutes 16 seconds. In a shorter game mode like Rumble or Trials of Osiris, you may never see a Dawnblade, but you will definitely see a Well of Radiance. Same thing applies to Bubble and other classes. It's really important to understand the game mode you're playing before you decide which subclass you're going to run. In 6v6, Daybreak is an awesome subclass to run because you have the potential of getting so many kills with it and you have plenty of time to build up one of these supers. But in 3v3, your best option might be a faster genning super rather than a super aggressive one because you may never see that super, which is a great time to get into the next one, which is people always ask me, should I save my super for three kills? Should I save my super for two kills? When do I use my super? And that really 
really depends on what is going on in your current game. You really should not be holding your super that long, especially if it's a tight game. Oftentimes, especially in 3v3, it's better just to let a super loose, get one kill, than to hold that super and take it to orbit. And then in 6v6, it's better to use your super for a couple kills or just one, and then already start regenerating your next one, rather than maybe waiting, popping your super for three kills 70% through the game, but then never seeing another super that entire game. The next big tip I have is you need to communicate. Communication is a huge key to getting better, not only as a solo player, but also with your friends and teammates. You might think, how can you communicate as a solo player? Maybe you watch iFrostbull or other PvP players and you'll notice they commentate all of their gameplay so the viewers can actually learn and understand what's going on. But not only that, if you do that for your own gameplay, you can realize your mistakes live in real time and try to correct those as you play rather than going back looking at your game and being like wow I played poorly what could I have done better you can real time adjust and think of better things you can do on the fly you just have to get over the fact that you're essentially talking to yourself another one I try to help people with mainly when I'm coaching is the difference between confidence and ego challenge ego challenging is when you peek every angle in every player because you think you're gonna win every single fight which is not to be confused with confidence which is rather than and disengaging sometimes sometimes you have to risk that fight because you believe you can win that fight it is very important to have confidence i've seen so many players that i've tried to help as soon as they don't get that first shot or as soon as the opponent shoots back they think well i gotta get out of here because i'm alone and i'm not gonna win this 1v1 you really gotta think of your positioning in these times because if you're out in the open if you try to disengage you are very likely going to die it also goes into the panic popping super which is where a lot of players will think oh no I'm at a huge disadvantage let me use my super and then they die either popping it with the animation or they go into a super with extremely low health and die anyways now this can work for some supers like bubble nova bomb and anything that activates extremely fast but it's not a good tactic to get used to because the few situations it may work in will also mess up your mindset and make you frequently make mistakes like that even more a huge one is what exotic should I use a lot of people ask me should I use Ophidian aspects like you do or are are transversive steps still worth using and that really all boils down to your build i use ophidian aspects because i don't want to have to rely on using a certain play style i just want my weapons to feel fast and i want to be fast paced in my gameplay because that's what's fun to me but maybe you're not playing fast pace all the time and maybe you like playing in a different way than most people so why would you use ophidian aspects a lot of the times a player who doesn't know pvp builds getting their first great build is a game changer and actually makes them have so much more more fun in the crucible i've seen this so many times some very good ones for the warlock would be like a nice reign of fire fusion rifle build luna factions fusion rifle build a osmiomancy glove freeze build which might get you quite a bit of hate mail but is an insanely good option we can't forget about the claws of ahamkar with arc warlock melee just an absolutely insane build that'll have you making people rage all day which just goes to show there's so many builds for every class for crucible but a lot of people simply load into crucible with whatever they have on and think it's kind of like call of duty but no you can effectively build for crucible as well and you should be doing that now i know this might have felt like a lot of super basic tip but trust me if you have any questions ask them in the comments below and as well as i'll be making more guides if you guys enjoy this video and i always love helping you guys out with questions in the comments as well so feel free to ask away and let me know if you'd like tips for anything else such as how to win comp games how to go flaws in trials of osiris because there is a method to everything it just takes a little bit of time bye guys